Hello and welcome to the skating lesson. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer, not in my car today, Dave. Hi. <laughs> not in your car. <laughs> well, this is this and that. We are going to be discussing everything going on with the 2022 European Figure Skating Championships. Jonathan is coming to you from Walt Disney World, Florida. Oh my goodness. If you are new here, please subscribe below and smash that like button. This is commitment, everyone. Discuss. Just Dave, Dave. Okay. I love my nieces. I love my nephew. This is why I am here. Yeah. I cannot stand it here. Yeah. It's waiting. It's like this. It's that. I know if if it makes you happy, I am so glad it exists. For it me, it is a chamber here. of horrors. It's a chamber of horrors, this place. I cannot, I cannot wait to leave. I hate you it. You know, it's so <laughs> funny. I I love and dislike Disney immensely. And I've always felt these complex feelings. I've always loved part of their movies, but then felt like they all had a formula that got boring two thirds of the way through. But I've always loved the songs. I love some of the characters. And that I've always felt like as a kid, we had the Disney afternoon, which was always such a um, okay. <laughs> right? like You find yourself watching it and be like, why am I watching it? It's not even the same voice. What's happening here, right? Um, and being at Disney World, I have, one member I loved it as a kid, like loved, had like one of the best, like I remember when I was there when I was four, it was like magic, right? Um, but I got sick in Disney World when we were uh, oh, performing no. on a band and choir trip when I was a junior in high school and we had been stuck. They had chartered, a, the school chartered a plane to take the band and the choir down so that we wouldn't okay. be near anyone and you know, all of that. The plane got uh, like the de-icing machine backed up into the wing and damaged the wing. So they had to fly a new plane to the Stewart Air Force Base. It was one of these air airlines that only had like three different airplanes on it. So we had to wait 12 hours in the airport and like one girl was sick. And by the end of the trip, like so many people, it was like- Of course, of course. I, of course. I had like a 103 fever going on after we performed in Epcot. So the whole trip, I was just in the hotel room and it was just that- nothing is on tv other than that 30 minute commercial that plays <laughs> of again. what you can't do yeah <laughs> you can't do so that's yeah. not it's it like really is a visceral distaste and okay. we were at the worst of the hotels so yeah. I, I held a family meeting when i was like 10 where mm -hmm. i was like if we go to disney again you cannot take me i hate it so much so that's when we started going to the gulf of mexico instead <laughs> started going to Captiva Island instead of Orlando. And that was like the best move I ever made as a kid. <laughs> anyway. It's, it's a little, it's fun and ghastly at the same time. There are some great experiences. There are some great exhibits. And then there are some. Yeah. That's... I, I, the only kind of like more uh, diverse and odd group of people that come together is usually for a skating event. Mm. <laughs> Like that's, I was like, wow, this is as varied and unusual as, as a nationals or something. <laughs> well, I have right in from Russia, Jonathan, we have to discuss something immediate, okay? Bring it. The return of the Team Tuberidza Pyramid. It's getting smaller. It's getting smaller. Not from my effort. <laughs> there she is. Even Did with the fall on that, yeah. Short program. Barford did her job at Lishna. No second row. Do you want to know why no second row? Tell me, Dave. Because we prepared. Us coaches, we did the work. What was this bullshit? <laughs> Short program. You need everybody around the world wanted to pull you for Tuktamisheva. Right. What part of mission have no power? People not understanding. Right. Well, we're understanding it now. A loss. Again. But wait, now hold on. You don't think they could have gone somewhere in the middle? I because I know they lose, but they or they lost, but they kind of did their job. I wonder Excuse if Terry was kind of pleased. Excuse me. Are they in the team event? Are you confident they are in the team event? Oh, yeah, I guess. Yes, I'm confident they're in the team of that. Oh, really? no, not if we do. Well, yeah, that's true. They are ranked number two. It's very clear. They solidified me. number two pair. How old is this coach who beating me in competition? I getting beaten by great grandmother? This is bullshit. <laughs> 
He doesn't even do the right order of Sinatra. We have Americans saying, why he doing the finale song in the middle? He doesn't even correct the Neil Glycan house. You think I have time to spend on some boy from Georgia embarrassing me? Hey, two different variations of the same quad. Yeah. This is kind of attention I need. How many falls? How many? You get my frenemy, Tatiana Tarasova, <laughs> saying you were scored correctly here? Finally. This woman didn't even know who I am when I was her student. She <laughs> pretended not to know me. Now, oh, you scored correctly. Olympics, how many weeks away? How many weeks away are they? Like three. <laughs> how many medals we won, won this time? You can't beat Daniel Grassel, Armageddon, when he's skating, it looked like it's Armageddon. You cannot, <laughs> listen, Kaka and Nutella, are the same color. Oh gosh. <laughs> they are not the same thing. <laughs> Don't even ruin Nutella for me that way. <laughs> Amazing. Terrible sandwich. Yeah. Terrible. I didn't know if technically Valieva was in the second tier because she showed some human sides. We're not happy. You saw free program. Oh, yeah. now we're going to have American commentators talking about how she doesn't use left arm on triple axle and how, oh, she falling. There it is. Oh my God, Jonathan, break it all. <laughs> this was so much fun to watch this week before work, like to get up and the, okay, so you're like in Disney, so you're missing it, but like, it's a really nice time schedule in Estonia. I would really, I enjoy this for next week. I'm really happy that we're staying here and that we're having the four continents during COVID in Estonia. Like mm -hmm. for no reason, because mm -hmm. it's like a pointless competition now. Right. But except for ISU money and we'll, we'll give people some points, but like to be able to get up and watch Deanna Stellato in the morning. And what if she's angry? Oh my God, it could be the best. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, amazing. Well, I mean, it, it's always fascinating uh, Europeans before the Olympics, because yeah. I, I mean, I first remember really tuning in around like 94 to how that Olympics was like informed by the Europeans before. And we saw some real finagling, not even among our top contenders, but about some backup contenders and things that were happening. And so it did become, again, I, I my heart goes out to a lot of these Russian skaters because they just have nationals after nationals after nationals. It seems. I mean, yet another like skate off for the men, really. Um, yet another top, skate off for the women in some ways. Who's at the top of the Galena pyramid at that event? Victoria getting so many six O's in short program. Oh, right. perfect, perfect program. Oksana losing to Serbia Bodoli. You think Galina was happy? And then she look was, what happened just a few weeks later, you know. He was one, two in the men. You think she right. was happy with Oksana losing to Surya Bonali? Oh my God. Oh she my got God. the bigger prize she needed, yeah. <laughs> oh but I mean, I always, in more recent history, this is where we saw really that giant surge of Adelina and Yulia right before Sochi. And that was when I sort My daughter of started- Yulia really delivered. Mm -hmm. She, yes, but the, it was when you started to see the groundwork of how they need to push the second one too, yes. just in case. And, and they did that correctly in order to, to help Adelina. No one knows skating- and, and I think we see it here. I have to say, I know you've been busy. You've got to watch meddling on Peacock. I mean, it's worth- I know, I keep hearing Peacock. about it. Okay. People who, like, they're, okay. There's actually starting to be enough content on Peacock that makes it worthwhile. Cause so many people complain about having to buy it, even though I think it's cheaper than Ice Network was. It is. And so I will always prefer it. Except Ice Network like technically showed us more. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I will say it's easier to use. There are some problems with Peacock and the stream. 
at times overall it's much better. remember in the beginning of ice network when the video didn't even match the audio like for years no, it was, right? it was, a, nightmare. It was a nightmare yeah right so it, it's it's better and it's, so this meddling series is really freaking good i have to say right. tara's husband's a really good uh tara lipinski her husband todd polish last name kapotsky or whatever is a really good um director and i know that she was very hands-on involved because i talked to queen sandra i was like tell me everything yeah and um it was it's really well done i mean the french judge i mean going into her explanations and the other judges talking about her i mean they are all as self-important as you would want from figure skating <laughs> and yes and it feels like old friends okay okay <laughs> and then they show a shot of you know the 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 media standing outside of that door when they had the referee meeting. And of course there's like seven foot five, Christine Brennan, right in the front, pushing her no, way. Right, out. right. Like, oh my God, I, <laughs> yes, okay. Probably wearing a purple scarf, okay. That's right, that's right. Yeah. A nice bold blazer of some sort. Yeah. Always in Northwestern color, representing. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, that's correct. Go yeah. Wildcats, okay. rawr, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that's funny well i'm glad to hear it's good because again it's it's sort of a rehashed topic over and over again so it's nice to know that like it takes a deeper dive or does something different than the others i could take 17 more parts let me tell you if they want okay. to come all of skating history okay. oh, my, oh my first of all yeah tip of the iceberg that's all these people that were like can you believe this happened? I was like, it happens every Olympics, something like this happens. Marie Rene doing like yoga in, in a like cemetery slash garden with like Catholic ornaments figure. Oh my God. Okay. Then I'm really like the shot, some of these background shots I'm really living for. Okay. 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 <laughs> And then they're like, well, you know, she's very French. Of course, she's a crazy person, but I love crazy people. You know, people I'm talking <laughs> like the things they say about this woman are so freaking good. This you know, is when we needed something like skating scores because I, back then it would have been so clear to have seen her. Oh, he gave us a retweet this week. We love skatingscores.com again. He this did. <laughs> A couple days behind, but yes, okay. Uh, but like, it's what's called a mutual things. shout out. We love him, he loves us. It's well, great. it's such an important service, but like, that if it had existed back then, it could have been so eye opening to a lot of those shenanigans. I he think. should go back in time. He should go back. <laughs> turn back. Yeah, what is it? Throwback Thursday. I turn then, back yeah. time. <laughs> I could find a way. Oh my God, it's been such a busy week. I've been really stressed, okay? Tell me, Dave, why? Because we came back from Nashville. I don't know how you went from Nashville to- It's Disney. terrible. It's, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. I was so like really exhausted after doing everything because I had a crazy travel day on Thursday. And just with all that we were doing there when you're like working slash socializing slash doing everything. I, I mean, I had like an impromptu this and that at the airport, Jonathan. Like the people like- <laughs> All I wanted to do was listen to the 90, 1985 countdown on Rick D's. It was going to play Centipede with Reed Jackson. And a woman sat down right here and wanted to talk about her feelings about Jason Brown. Yeah. yeah. She didn't actually want my opinion, but she wanted to be heard. No, it's, it, isn't it interesting? They very rarely do. I find most skating fans just want to be heard. Yeah. Okay. You know, but we were... And then there was this violinist, Stella Chen. She she walked, moved oh. over. The people in the terminal were really talking about the skating. Okay. 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 <laughs> Wanted to do is listen to Centipede. Okay, it was just really my jam. You asked for so little, yeah. <laughs> so little. Okay. It was amazing. Oh. amazing. So, <laughs> Chris Shelby was texting me. He's like, "Centipede is on." I'm trying yeah. to listen. Yeah. Okay. I'm currently listening to people weep about Jason Brown. <laughs> but um, so I came back and I was so run down this week, and then with all the COVID, I stepped this like pain in my chest. And I'm not like a big hypochondriac person because I was like actually run down. Like, I just felt like my glands were like fighting something, but they weren't fully yeah. swollen. But like something was happening in my neck and it was tight. And I didn't skate this week, Alita made me quarantine. And my mom was like, you should quarantine. So when the two strong women in my life are like this, I'm like, all right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, and I just felt so exhausted the whole freaking week. And then we have meddling. We've got the Europeans. I've got, you know, the stuff that we normally do, you know, yeah. throughout 
eat in my schedule. This is after we did Koreans and after we did uh, wow. Canadians. And, you know, so. <laughs> Luba Ilusheshki to Megan Duhamel. Oh, happy pregnancy to Megan. When is it coming out? When is it coming out? You know, they all- July, are. July. <laughs> so the intensity that we have from the US nationals, the Canadians have the same one about theirs. Right. Then my friend Jeff Rohr, why are you talking about Americans at the beginning of Canadians? I was like, well, it was in the description and we filmed it two days later. So we have to talk about what is in the hot topic. It was more of a story there. Yeah, that, that had not been touched on by the time we filmed, yeah. They're not just about the event. They're also what's happening in time. So, right. you know, Canadians. And he will always like pick a little bit, you know. Okay. <laughs> We love Jeff. Um, okay. we, then let's uh, see if he watches the Europeans. <laughs> not because the Canadians okay. are in it, and then he'll be like, "I don't have time to watch skating that closely. I didn't know what was going on." I'll be like, "Okay." All of like the the women's podium is here, but you don't have time for that. <laughs> busy person. He's taking care of his parents. He's running a company. I don't know what he's doing. He's very busy. So. But I'm going to tell you, this is that point in the season where it does become a little interesting. Also, yes, this was a precursor to the Olympics in some ways. But yes, also, it's like the same people doing the same thing with the same sort of situations at times, I find. Oh, I'm season. not even done talking about the stress of the last week. Oh, oh, OK. <laughs> the NCAA gymnastics started. Okay. A second girl from the same gym had to leave UCLA over like racist comments and what having to go to a school in the South, not stereotypical at all. Then oh my gosh. in the middle of all of this, Jonathan, cheer comes out on Netflix season two with sexual predator, Jerry, with Sarah Klein, the NASA attorney and her new injectables. And then they brought out the young twins who were abused by Jerry. I mean, it was a barn burner. I, you can't, like nine episodes could have used 18 of those, okay? And like, I noticed that there are people that just miss, like, like they disappear in the middle of cheer. And it seems like there's some sort of like shadiness, like fame really got to their heads and maybe some scandals. And Monica just looks like a tired, narcissistic hag the whole season and there's a lot happening i don't remember if you watched season one or not but it was not i tried yet. like one episode and i was it's just not for me so i was like oh my god Jonathan. i failed <laughs> think, think about it though then we're gonna come back and i'm just gonna be like no not for me again <laughs> it was so freaking engrossing okay okay, okay. I mean, well, that's what sometimes I don't like about those shows is that I'm watching the first episode. And I'm like, this is garbage. I hate this kind of programming. And then suddenly I'm like watching all of it because you, they that, know how to suck you in. Cheer has that Mad Men quality where it's like, it's kind of like when you're watching Water Boil and it's like one thing, two, <laughs> oh <my> okay. <laughs> and then you're like, where did the night go? I have to be at work in two hours. Okay. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. That was me with Europeans. <laughs> well, let's start with the pairs. This was uh, exciting discipline, mm -hmm. um, especially because there were really only three pairs that we, three to four pairs that we cared about here. But this was uh, Tarasova and Morozov's redemption uh, coming from uh, Russian nationals. We had to see them against Misha Nagelyamov and against, um, you know, Boykova. Boykova. Yeah. What did you make of these uh, teams? Well, it, it was very fascinating because given that I was watching on the delay, I did that thing that I don't like doing, but there's like no way around it, is I end up seeing the result before I see the skating. Um, you're and not like, going to tag you in it on Twitter. Yeah, exactly. It's like everything and you're going to go on any sort of form of social media and everyone's posting, you know, the results. Well, don't so all the I, message you on Facebook? Do they oh, yeah. You? Oh, yeah. They're like, I can't believe she just fell. And I'm like, okay, yeah. well, I, I, I just woke up. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Um, so with Tarasov and Morozov, I anticipated when I saw their second place finish that they must have had like a couple of real errors. But then when I went back and saw it, it was, there were some really lovely performances. I felt like this was, this was like a very enjoyable watch for me, both programs. I, I think it's to watch, in my opinion. Yeah, I think so too. Mm -hmm. And the dance is actually great to watch too. Uh, the what I noticed, and I was talking to Sandra, and she's like, you know, Taras and Morozov are really the best of the pairs. It's like, but they make too many mistakes. It's like, yes, 
And that's that, are we going by the day? Are we going on overall quality? And it's, I mean, overall quality, I think it's a no brainer, they're the best, right? But when you Maybe. make mistakes in every competition, you stop being the best, right? right? Because your mental ability is not at the level of your physical ability. And at a certain point that does impact the overall quality. I thought for Tarasov but Morozov, you know, they had errors in both programs. Um, the Atari bonus on that throw in the short. I mean, the Atari bonus is real. <laughs> that, that, that was nuts. That was, I mean, some of the GOE and we're really going to get into it in some of the other disciplines, but yes, on that throw in the short, are you talking about? Like it was, yeah. it, it was egregious. That, <laughs> I mean, it was so, so and let's talk about why, because there are multiple errors in that throw that you could take. First error is she's pitched forward. Second right. error, which is actually a separate deduction is that the hand touches the ice. So they're both up. The first one is definitely minus one to minus two, the pitch forward, the, the hand to the ice is a minus two. So when you start to add those together, you're already at minus four, right? So even if you were saying that this is the greatest throw of all time, you're only at a plus one, but you really, yeah. what kind of throw is the best ever if it had those two errors, right? So, yeah. you, you know, it should be in the negatives for sure. And she also had the leg fly up. So it wasn't that she was forward like Trusa, but it was that her leg flew up since so the loss of control. So and this I mean, sort of stuff with the, the Croatian judge in particular it had some very unique sort of takes on this, but that was a plus three from, <laughs> from the Croatian judge. Like, yeah, great, exactly what we're looking for, plus three. Like, in I the just, words of Oleg Vasiliev, is this one of the judges that Terry took out to dinner? And the answer is must have been. Remember when we talked about how she took them to dinner before Junior Worlds, and of course it was in sports room being like, how dare they say that, right? Oh, well, it was leaves the same thing. She did the same thing again. Yeah. Maybe like a tactic. How about when they took Ted Barton to dinner and posted about it? Oh, I wonder if Ted's yeah. going to be favorable to you next time. Oh. Right. Exactly. How could he be more favorable? I don't know. How. We see you. But We're not hating. I think it's a brilliant strategy. I you're think playing the game. Brilliant. Yeah. I yeah. think, she, listen. I may not like the game, but I think Terry is the best at it. A hundred percent, hundred for better or for worse. Yeah, she's winning the game. Yeah, so, she's advocating. She's she's doing yeah. So, but it was interesting in general. I found this for a while at the ISU events. It was getting a little tiresome when everything was the season's best, everything was a personal best because there was this obsession with trying to like break records, or they thought that was interesting to fans. I found in general, a lot of the scores here, pairs included, that just the, the general like scores were quite high at this oh, event. They Everyone's are. personal besting and season besting and da, 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 da. And I don't know that necessarily all of the performances match that. So some of these were considered to be Russian panels, like the men's event uh, mm. was in particular. Uh, and I think we are seeing some of those scores reflected. There's also a lot of politics happening because they're trying to set up certain skaters for the Olympics and for the team yeah. event. Uh, when we get to the men, there's clearly a big push going on uh, right. from Kondratiuk to replace right. maybe Loida in the team event and get and get those PCS up. Um, so I was not surprised to see the scores huge here. That's kind of like why you watch Europeans. Like, yes, it's to see the best in Europe, but it's really to watch how the, the game, the game, game begins. Yeah. 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 Because we didn't have the Grand Prix final, this is a concentration of that. So that's exactly right. This basically showed us in many ways what the pairs Grand Prix final, how it was going to boil down minus Sweden. Usually it's slower. Like usually it's like little by little. You start to see right. this happen in here. It's just really aggressive um, right. because we haven't had all those opportunities. So, right. Um, I mean, do you think this will mimic the Russian placements? I, not necessarily one, two, three, but do you think this will be the order of Russians at the Olympics? I'm inclined to say yes. Well, let's have a discussion about this. So Sandra's absolutely right that um, Tarasova and Morozov are the best of the three pairs. Um, but in terms of what if they deliver? What if hell freezes over and they deliver a clean performance at the Olympics. I do wonder if if politics would be enough to like dissuade judges with eyes from going, you know, with with right. them over Misha Galyamov. I think Moskvina has done 
her job. Oh, we have to discuss her on meddling in a second. Okay, because that was some <laughs> pause on okay. meddling. She goes, the Canadians did their old easy program to love story. I didn't see very much love between these two people. And then she's not wrong. <laughs> Barish Naya, there's a mistranslation. And one of our Russian friends reached out and said that Barish Naya actually calls the Canadians skating like two nightstands next to each other. She's an absolute <laughs> shit. <laughs> And she said she didn't like them at all when they were before. And th there's just like so many great things. Anton vaping, Anton when he refuses to talk uh, to the media after the event. Jonathan, it's so freaking good. The Russians are the most Russians and our favorite. Okay. Yeah. Now, again, we rejudged that event. So, and you know, our friend Chris <laughs> on Patreon cannot, he's, he's mad at Masvina. Why? He's mad at her from the other documentary when uh, Bad Sport, whatever the one on Netflix is called, when uh, she says that, um, when she doubts the existence of the Russian mafia. And she's like, where is the Russian mafia? No, excuse me, you're losing the, the visual yes. aid she uses. <laughs> he did not find that charming. He found it insulting that she would think that we are that stupid. So, mm, mm. but of course they all talk to us in that way. That's why I gave my interview, speaking to Russians the way they speak to us. And how has the response been? As, As expected. expected. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought you made some excellent points. Regret not a word. Interesting the stuff that would be edited out of a propaganda outlet. Anything that was too high on Julin, they actually edited some of the uh, machinations of the Diana Davis response out, which is why I'm glad mm -hmm. that I remember the audio. Because right. there was okay. maybe it got a little too real uh, that stuff was removed. So right. that, okay, censored, censored. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Fair it went enough. about as ago. Like they framed me about about as what I thought they would do. Yeah. Okay. So okay. you know they claim they want to get to know you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I bet you do. Yeah, my favorite color is red. <laughs> I didn't ask that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, wait. So I want to ask you about this um, triple sow oiler triple sow um, sure, yeah. from Mishina Galiamov. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's her, mm. you hear my hers? Mm, in particular. And this is something that's happening now in the men. And we saw more sort of covering up in the women's event. This oiler is becoming like a weird crutch for okay. a lot of skaters. So I'm a tall giraffe. I find oilers for me to be one of those things where I can't think about it. If I think about an oiler, which no one calls an oiler in the rink, if you're like not- The half sound, yeah. A half yeah. loop, right? Um, or a half loop, sorry. It's not just like, I'm sure the Tracy Wilson started calling it an oiler the next day, but no one else calls it an oiler, right? I, it's one of those things where it's like, you can't overthink it. And most people do tend to cheat it. it right. It's just one of those things. I actually find it so awkward when you can tell now that everyone is trying to do it correctly. And I find that it actually makes the combinations look kind of jerky. However, Mishin is, is so freaking cheated and she's so far ahead of Galyamov. And hers always looks like almost a step out the way that she yes. does. I think in a lot of the ones, and we'll talk about this in the singles, I think some of them are designed to cover step outs. Well, some like, of them it, are, yes. Yeah, yeah, in the same way, you know, we, Peggy Fleming introduced us to the spread eagle axle, spread eagle situation. Now we have seen many great skaters. If the axle doesn't go great, turn around, put the foot down in a spread eagle real quick. No one knows the better, mm -hmm. except we do. So this, this Euler epidemic, it, it seems to be a thing because for many of them, I can almost hear them go, Ugh. like it has that kind of quality in the, in the middle of this jumping pass. When we were getting half loops, like earlier in the 90s and stuff, they could be very elegant. Just like simple ways to just reframe the next jump. These are very labored. They're very, um, they're just gross looking a lot of the time. Remember the Katya and Sergei jumping pass where they would do like almost like a one foot axle or a single axle to, a, to an oiler, to a this, to a that, to that, to that, to that, to a double at the end. Imagine right. if you had to think about each one of those jumps and make sure that they were perfectly clean. You couldn't, like, right. it takes right. away the magic of it. I do think that this 
obsession with the Oilers is silly yet very skating that we're going to yeah. micro pick everything. Um, but I get like why they do it because it was getting so out of hand. Uh, yeah. with the Oilers. It's it's almost overemphasizing them. I really don't like how Mishina does her Euler. It is a big, to me, there are two eyesores in that program that makes me not, I, on one hand, I would love to see Moscovina win again, Olympics, great coach. I think this really, I think her legacy is so cemented. I think that what she's doing now in coaching, just lifetime achievement award, right? Yes. However, to me, there are two, there are two to three things I think she actually no, it's not a complete miss, but I think that it's a little bit of a miss. Um, I think the the oiler on the sow oiler sow um, is a glaring omission. Mm -hmm. The ending of the Mishina Galyamov program it just doesn't work. Just it's still we're still waiting. It's not natural. It's just it's like we're waiting to pose for a picture or something like they ended and then they're like, oh, we should do something to like end great. And then they kind of talk about it. And then he just is like, I guess I'll do this. Like, I don't know if their intention is to fill it at some point, especially like she should know, I think, and does understand the importance of building and climaxing to get people out of their seats. So many times we see people miss the end musically or with the energy and it just kind of goes and, and I think if you just, the Zorro ice dance, that little moment that we all love the most is in those final five seconds that make the whole dance. They could have something so similar and so easily achieved. It it seems like a weird omission, right? I think, I think it's a great idea. I think it's a very cool idea to end that way. I just, I think she gave this team a little bit of material that is more elevated than they are. Mm. I think that their free skate from last year was actually more on the nose of who they are. Well, and do you remember when, when Sandra said when she went to choreograph for Tara, she's like, I can't give her something that's too beyond her. I can't give her something for a mature, refined dancing woman. I have to give her something that's charmingly young. Yeah. And, and I think this music, it sounds so much like Bear's Night and Secret Leads in 1999. And it's funny when you watch meddling and everyone talks about how Elena and Anton had you know, choreography that wove together and they're absolutely correct. The only thing is if you watched skating for the you know five years before that, you would know that they did almost all of those transitions in other programs right. and that Masvina has repeated those transitions from every bear. You know, yeah. you can see this, you're like, oh, that move was done by this bear, that move was done by that one, okay. But yeah. she's brilliant and does it. But this program to me is a little bit formulaic for her you're like oh we've seen this before but right. we've seen better teams do some of it it's just not the music for them for right. the, I, but i don't think that she probably thought in her master plan if you read uh, the second mark and how she would plan season to season i don't know if she knew that this team would be the team that was going to win uh, the world championships last year and then be in this position. It almost yeah. feels like Boykova was probably the pair that they thought would- 100%. Do that. And- Right up until the event, right up until that world championships. I mean, there, and I, it's tough to like judge a skater for their response in those real moments. Come on, that's so tough. So when people were, you know, writing at Boykova for her comments in the Kiss and Cry right after Worlds, but again, it set the whole tone for her future. Made her more interesting. I think so too. It made her like a fighter and a real person that was like really feeling all of these emotions. But again, that was the day it set in motion the entire trajectory that she was now the third, the third pair in yeah. Russia. Yeah. Tough. But this, this program, do you think with their momentum, do you think that Sui and Han can stop them? I mean, they have a very high score at this point in time. We haven't seen Sui and Han compete a lot. So we, you know, we're going against season best to season best, but Sui and Han have competed quite, you know, rarely. Uh, well, it's to interesting to see even amidst um, Tarasova Morozov and Mishina Galeyamov, they can't quite decide where to put their PCS. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like pretty split here at Europeans. And I would imagine Sui and Han, like, it's kind of a no-brainer, in my opinion, that they should be on top PCS-wise. So to me, it's up to Sway and Han's technical mark, mm. I think. 
and, and they do have such quality in their elements. But again, you look at the score for Misha Galeama, all plus fours and fives. Mm -hmm. So well, I, I don't I don't know where that leaves. I don't I don't know that where that leaves sort. You know, they remind me almost of like the Ali Raisman type. Not the prettiest. Okay. Gets the job done. <laughs> right. <laughs> Was Ali Raisman the prettiest in that London floor final? God no. Right. But she got her tumbling passes done. She got her leaps done. And by golly, someone else better was going to have to perform at their absolute best to beat her. I think that's where we're at with Mishina Galyamov and the other teams. They're like punting at like 96%, right? Mm. We and Han are going to have to be at their absolute best. I think it's at the point that the sway, sway in hand, sorry, they don't have any room they can't have a step out on a sow cow they can't have a step out on a toe loop they can't have an awkward you know quad um twist catch they have to actually skate perfect and the same for tarasova and morozov so i think in that sense mishina and galyamov you know masvina has really put them at a consistency level that's right here and they're going to be scored and rewarded for it but i remember when i used to watch you and jenny all the time and the key was when for sort of these girls that were middling in the United States, the, mm. I, I think she was saying it about Courtney Hicks even. She was like, if you're that person that feels a little bit outside the bubble, your way in is to just be the reliable one. And you mm. are there. You have a seat at the table every time. I think like an interesting intellectual dilemma would be if Tarasova Morozov and Sway and Han full skate clean. That's mm. the interesting discussion. But mm. here comes whoop, plowing right through the middle, the ones that are less artistically inclined, but you you kind of know they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. I, I think consistency might win the day. Yeah. As much as, I, and that has nothing to do with being fans of certain teams. I just think that's how it may, under that kind of pressure, mm -hmm. it's Misha Kalyamov that I kind of rely on to deliver. Yeah, I think Boykova and Kozlowski did well. Uh, I think that their skating has improved steadily throughout the season. I just don't think it's going to be enough when you put in yeah. sway in hand, unless sway in hand make a lot of errors, but they're going to be on right. home ice. Yeah. They also have, you know, the Japanese pair. They also have uh, Pung and Jin to um, contend with. So I yeah, think- Unfortunately, I see uh, it's very possible Boykova could be one off the podium. I, 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 and it's going to be heartbreaking because we have four great pairs. Four I think she'll respond. Pairs the way people feel about getting the pewter most times when they're a high level athlete. I don't think it's gonna be the Elaine Zayak, oh my God, I got the pewter. Yeah. I think it's the opposite. Right, correct. So. It, and it's tough. It's tough because, you know, they do great stuff, but it's just not, the magic isn't there for them right now. So yeah. it's too well, bad. What did you make of the dance event? Cause you brought up uh, the, you brought up Smart and Diaz and they actually qualified for the Olympics, thrilled for them. Yes. I do feel sad that we're not going to see both teams, but I felt sad last time that we weren't going to see both teams. Exactly. So, and I think, and do you think, I think it's very possible for Smart and Diaz to finish top 10 at Worlds to qualify them two teams. Don't you think that's a possibility? I do. I just wonder, is it going to matter? Are they going to be around in a year? <laughs> like, mm, are, mm, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, maybe if two spots are secured, maybe, maybe it does it keep you in. That could change. I think yeah. uh, Hubble and Donahue are certainly looking to retire. They've said that this was going to be their last, you know, go round. Right. He's engaged to Madison Hubble. Does that mean that they both? Who knows what any of this means? I think you don't know until yeah. Cookie Crumbles what will really happen. But I don't know. I hope that Smart and Diaz aren't done, but it's possible. Then Sada Hurtado also. I know that she's had injuries, so is she going to be done? But. Yeah. You, I think there's an incentive to stay in when you know that so many teams ahead of you are going to retire, at least to do an extra season, because then you can win some medals, get some shows, have opportunities perhaps to... And, and what a moment for Spain. If they start having two dance teams in the top 10 consistently, you know, which I think they can, because this was never meant to be an anti-Hurtado campaign. It was just, I love the Smart and Diaz material this year. She is great. I didn't care for... Hurtado's material as much this year. And I think it was literally the material alone that won it, in my opinion. Unfortunately, in terms of presentation, it does seem like Hurtado is performing a solo dance event. I mean, he just Correct. has nothing going on in, in yeah. that performance. Right. And once he pointed out to you, I know he's a very good skater, 
but in terms of a performer, he is not. And there's no right. chemistry between them. Uh, yeah. She is. One might, would you say two nightstands? <laughs> no. I've never heard that expression. It's pretty funny though. I'm gonna, how do I put it? It's more like she's a pole dancer and he's the pole. And like, she's just performing around him. And I don't mean that in a sexual way. I mean, in terms of he's just an object. Stationary, yeah, exactly. Well, they used to say that about Pavarotti. They would like put him in a chair in the middle of the stage and then like all the Sopranos had to act around him. <laughs> yeah. okay. Right? Like, it's this, yeah. It's so, like he's the Maypole and she's running around. <laughs> right? like, I mean, it's just, He's just adding nothing uh, to this situation. Yeah. I couldn't even tell you facially what he looks like. If you were to put all of the ice dance guys in a line and you have to say, who is, who is he? Who's Kira? It would take me a moment. Yes, I, I want to whip out my phone to Google. Okay. I yeah. just. I mean, quite I'm, frankly, there's a, there's a reason I always refer to the team as Hurtado. Yeah. I'm watching this. <laughs> yeah. Not at all. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Which of course uh, is, is like some people's belief in how it should be. I don't know about that for dance, but. <clears throat> so the judges usually watch the guy to evaluate. So this is, I don't think fans know this, but if you're talking to people that have ice danced and this is part of why some people aren't as offended by Diana Davis as others. A lot of times, this is so misogynistic you can say, but a lot of times specialists will be like, well, how do you differentiate, differentiate the dance teams? I'm like, well, you watch the guy. Mm. Because throughout history, this is historic, it was usually the man that was the leader and the stronger of the two skaters. However, there are teams where that's very different. It was more ballroom based, especially also, which- This which is also from a 6-0 six -oh, yeah. six -oh lineage, right? Right, right? Where the man led and, you know, Christopher Dean led Jane and she was, you know, the great partner to this. Right. You know, right. she was the Ginger Rogers, he was the Fred Astaire, you know, more people talk right. about that. It has changed over time. And I think the fact that, you know, you now give each one a level on the steps changes that. And the same thing with the twizzles over time. However, there's, you know, this is something that still is in its roots. I think with Hubble and Donahue, there's not a strong male leading the woman. You know, Hubble is every bit as good as Donahue. If yes, not I find two skaters that know how to fill the arena, you know, with but, projection and Speed. Does that does that cause some of their mistakes that they're both have such strong energy and that of they course. <laughs> that's right. the thrilling part. <laughs> it's all it's those Midori Tanya kind of wild moments. Again, I think these are like the quad jumper triple axel mm -hmm. ice dancers are Hubble and Donahue. That's them. They are the Midori the Ito of ice dance. <laughs> you watch the Igor Spielbahn teams. And we're not talking about now. This goes back 30 years in America where he would have the entire last group at nationals in the Naomi Lang days. I mean, Peter Chernichev led Naomi Lang around that ice, dragging yeah. her at times, right? Because he was so strong. That's how Igor did it with all of those teams when they would all do tangos one after another at the nationals. Uh, so, but again, this is a real shout out for Montreal because several teams have gone to Montreal that were designed with <clears throat> strong male partners and, and less strong female partners. And I found that the work done in Montreal has like empowered their female skaters to really step it up a level. Like everyone who went there, I find, and Marie France, I don't know if that was from her own partnership experience or what, but they have more equal partnerships than I'm used to in other teams. You know who, I, who stood out and appreciated me more than ever? Hmm. And the, to me, there's always been like a wink, wink, nudge, nudge about this skater and this family and people are gonna be like, oh my God, how could you say that? And I'll explain why. Allison Reed. Okay. Yes. She's represented many different countries, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Yes, she has. Yeah. Different countries than her siblings. They went back to back in the compulsory dances at the Olympics in Vancouver. They represented Israel. She represented Georgia or Israel. I don't, one of them. Okay. Yeah. She's okay. <laughs> been around. Okay. But watching her here, she's a very cute Lithuanian type boy partner. I don't know his name. Uh, listen, I'm not investing in any Allison Reed partner. Okay. They're not. <laughs> All right. But I thought that she looked lovely. I mean, the oh. dress did look like we got it at Marshall's, but I thought that she looked fantastic. Her skating quality was. Well, unfortunately, they're not going to the Olympics 
picks, no, right? Lithuania like, wouldn't, wouldn't do it. So she probably didn't want to invest in the dress. But they've had some really nice moments. Allison has had some nice moments on the Grand Prix this season. I think they're still mad at Isabella Tobias. It was mm. funny because Allison Reed would have grown up with her, skated in Hackensack with her. Uh, they would have shared many a partners. I think Atar skated with both of them. I think he now okay. works with Isabeau, but he was that token partner that skated with Tobias, skated with the Reed sister, all of them, okay? okay? So this is how it all, if you know through historically. Remember, Tobias like really fought hard for that Lithuanian citizenship. And then as soon as those Olympics were over, and then she went and competed for Israel. And Lithuania was like actually mad about that situation. Mm. So uh, I have a feeling that that does impact uh, this kind of a situation. I can't prove that. However, right. my gut when but she got like, yeah. it was not a good uh, situation there. So okay. anyway. Um, well, sad not to see them because I agree with you. They have some really lovely qualities. Yeah. Her especially. Yeah. I have to say with Smart and Diaz, the funny thing is, is that the one moment that I can really point to, one of their second set of twizzles, I think a little scary here, but the, the one thing that they messed up, they didn't hit the ending pose. They did not hit the ending pose. Which, which is like the whole point, like this yeah. is the whole point. <laughs> and it's right in front of the judges, like right here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. it, it was enjoyable skating. I enjoyed the performance, but they did not nail the end of it, so. yeah. And again, this sort of like group think like or think tank thing that kind of happens at the beginning of an Olympic season, I think told us in the, I don't know, in late summer that this was going to be the Spanish entry for the Olympics, even though nothing's, you, you never know anything until it's all finished, but the, just the momentum seemed pretty clear, even though it was like by the thinnest of margins, mm -hmm. once the tone was set, we knew which way you, it was supposed to go. Do you know who the caller was here? No, for dance, no. My coach, Kristen Fraser Lucanen. The one, nice. the one who, when I was having back problems last year and having a real moment, I got a text from her. Stop being a pussy. <laughs> oh God, oh God. And you're like, so is that a level four? Is that? <laughs> She's just a tough woman with okay. everyone. Okay. That's yeah. just her personality. Yeah, I, I certainly would not respond well to that kind no, of No, 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 no. I really you need like to hear it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. In that moment, yes. Um, she's like tough with everyone, but even direct, but supportive, but she's just this way. So mm. like, she's going to give it to you and then you could discuss it and analyze it. She's not going to do like Robin Wagner, like right. <laughs> moments for Sarah Hughes. And she's also not going to berate you. She's like this. I think okay. it's what makes her a good caller is that she just blunt calls it as she sees it. You yeah. Know? Okay. Um, you know, she calls it like that girl that was 11th, probably so many times that wanted to be top 10. You know, she just yeah. says what she really sees. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> she has that energy about her. So, amazing. amazing. I don't know what she thought about this and that. But yeah, I mean, amazing. So, um, but yes, she was a very tough. She was not horrible. She wasn't like a Judy Bloomberg. When Judy does. No, I, I was, she's my favorite call. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like I don't think she favored anyone here. I think she was. Talk about a bitter pewter. I always thought that Shahrazad program of Judy Bloomberg should have been on the metal podium. Just of saying. Of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course. Although so I, I'm curious here. This is like just a little bit of a moment that happened on the metal stand that I found very eye-opening, which is when Nikita was like yelling at Marco Fabri to take off his mask for the photo. You know, the Italian team whose coach was just tested positive for COVID. And he's like, take it off, take it off. And you see the Italians be like, uh, no, we're not taking our masks off for the photo. And you just in that moment, you saw the color you saw what it must be like to train with him. Um, I mean, he got kicked out of the camp nice rink when Nikita was there for a reason. For his behavior. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's- That's why it, they had to go back and then eventually wound up with Julian. They were with Marina Zueva before that. Yeah. 
And I, I applaud Marina. That was like, mm -mm, I don't need another medal that much. Get out. Like, I, I really like that about her. I, I, I mean, the attempt was Marina or was it the rink? Who knows what happened there? But Got yeah, it. certainly. Okay. They were. No, I mean, it, it was nice to see the Italian. I mean, so Barbara, again, tested positive for COVID, was not at the at the size of the board. And I remember when Josh and I went to Vancouver, I think his highlight was watching Barbara mm. at the at the boards <laughs> because she's beaten, she's clapping, she's such a cheerleader. Um, mm. And it was nice to see them do well without her. They kind of remind me, speaking of Judy Bloomberg, a little bit of the Shibutanis at times, in which when you look at their pattern, for instance, in the rhythm dance, sharp, clean, a little smaller maybe than Vicky and Nikki, but um, also a little dry, maybe. Controlled. Say it again. I would use the word controlled. Controlled, nice. yes, yes. Crisp, but Crisp. yes. It's, it's so interesting to watch Barbara coach. She's put all of her passion into making this team so precise to get the bullets. And yet, in Ice Dance, I think what we respond to as viewers who watch, is that abandoned? Yeah. And oftentimes that is not in lockstep with the compulsory dance pattern to get the maximum points. Right. How many times do we watch the French not really nail all of the key points, but right. they still get the high score because of the GOE and the other levels. I think that there's an element to the Shibutani's and Guinard and Fabri, which is absolutely right what you're saying. They really focus on nailing that. So if you want to see a great midnight blues pattern that is very technically correct, go watch the Italians. It is actually mm. really, really special. Yeah. They extend at the right moments, they hit their key points, it's on the music and it's precise, but they're just not interesting to me. As I team. know. But they're very good. And the should be yeah. kind of the same way. Yeah, it's, it's almost like an academic approach mm -hmm. a little bit. And I, I don't know, it's as if Barbara, like, as we were talking about with Misha Nagalianov, like you've got like Sway in Hand and you've got Tarasimo Morozov that have this like uh, inherent special thing and maybe you can break through just by being the solid one. It, but like you're saying, the solidity in some of this doesn't go as far as the no. rest of the band. So the Shibutani's when they would do their twizzles, right? They were so freaking technically perfect. But unless you're an ice dance lover or you appreciate a good, you know, you just love a nice twizzle. <laughs> didn't have the wow factor. Then you go watch Scott Moyer and Charlie White. They both threw themselves into the twizzles. Mm -hmm. And then you think about the way that Virtue and Moyer use the twizzles to really create an artistic moment in the Moulin Rouge program and in the program the year before. And you think of all the time that Charlie White used the fan of the opera and used the twizzles to really build the story. They added a little something extra. Were they as precise and as synchronized as the Shibutani's? No, but they had an extra mm to them right. that made dance an art form. And I think that that's what you're really kind of seeing is that like it's like almost too correct. It's like yeah. so that it's boring. Right. right? And that's just- the and, It no. sort of exacerbates that like, we're now doing an element. Mm -hmm. Instead of like, if the music was just as crisp and clean and controlled at the same time, it could actually be amazing. But most places where people want to put the twizzle is in this moment of like release in the music that's a highlight. Now, having said that, Marco Fabri should not only teach Nikita to keep his mask on, but also teach him what edge to be on or where to put his body weight in those twizzles. Because I have news for you. I think the Stepana, uh, Stepana Vabukin marks had to go up because someone in Russia is like, hold on now. There's a good possibility the key is going to topple over on these at some point and we're going to need backup. I, there's a lot of... Um jockeying going on in Russian skating. Actually, I'm going to do an As the Blade Turns where I explain all the stuff in the press, what's happening. It actually seems like there are alliances happening in Russia and they're, it does seem like because the Terry teamed up with Julin, right? It's almost like there are like two political powerhouses going on. And it's very interesting that the comments that are coming out in the press about things are 
there's some power brokering happening and people are trying to figure out, I believe, and from what I'm seeing, and how are we going to stop the Terry avalanche happening, right? She teamed up with Julin politically, right? And you start to see, oh, wait, Stepanova and Bukin. Hmm. For them to get uh, the gold medal at Russian Nationals ahead of Diana Davis was actually a big deal and a question, even though it shouldn't have been. And they kind yeah. of had to rally to get this. I think if you were to watch the top two performances here and not know which team was ranked higher, you might think that Stepanova and Bukin are the better team. In terms, they have of more interesting material for me, and they perform more. I think in person, it, mm -hmm. it is different because even though Vicky and Nikki are can be sloppy, and I don't necessarily understand the material at all, you do know they go fast, mm -hmm. and you do know they like their pattern. For instance, like okay, there's some like blade flip flopping for them on the the twizzles, but the pattern is fast and lovely. And that was the one disappointing thing for me when I finally saw step on of a book in live because I've always liked them sort of in a showier, easier to get presentational way. Um, but I, yeah, I don't know the material. I, I like this free dance. Mm. I don't totally understand it, but I like it. I'm more interested in watching it all the way through than I am the Rachmaninoff situation. The Vicky and Nikki Rachmaninoff is a real tough watch because you think you're going to watch this classic Russian performance and that it's going to be high art and beautiful. And that music edit just takes you out of the moment. I wonder also, why they felt the need to do that. His lack of control, and we know that he's had back injuries, I think shoulder problems and knee problems right throughout his career. She is actually improved. If you go back and watch Boston World, he was a million times stronger than she was. And in the first season, it was so glaring to watch them. If you watch now, she's often the stronger of the two of them. I agree, because she is steady. She's, she's much steady. more reliable. She's improved yeah. tremendously. And he has deteriorated with his yeah. health over time. I mean, his twizzles have always been out of control, now very out of control at times, where it is worrying where you think, hmm, will they do the team event with his health? Will they do everything? I think Stepanov and Bukin are a reliable um, option to put in there. And maybe something that they will consider knowing that mm, they may not win the ice dance portion of the team event and they may not need to. So right. Uh, right. could it depends on who wants to do what and what medals they're trying to preserve. So I, that's a interesting situation. There. But it was interesting. I mean, Julian, obviously also a politician I, it, to see that one day mm -hmm. international judges, Russian judges didn't know which team to get behind back mm -hmm. at that Grand Prix when like one of them could have medaled, but they like didn't have their ducks in a row and they were trying to push them both and it didn't really work. Then just one day we woke up and we were told that this is the clear second place team. And, and again, I felt like, why are we being told that? And why are we thinking, why are there headlines, in my opinion, going into the Olympics, thinking that there's a fight for the gold medal in dance? Well, it's smart I, I, politics. Because that, think about the American situation, Jonathan. Did the USFS make a colossal error, or did they not? By perhaps judging the dance event the way they saw it on the night in Nashville. Oh, if we were playing for the best results, mm -hmm. I think we would have just picked Aren't one we? for better or for worse and pushed them all season unfairly. Aren't we? I mean, is that not the actual game that we're playing? Mm, because you think internationally chalk and baits will go better? I think internationally, you don't know which American team is going to deliver on the night. They've actually both had, had errors. Chalk and Bates, smaller. There's more in the rhythm dance earlier in the season. Although last year, you know, he had some problems uh, when they were competing. They seem to be peaking at the right time and better. But I would be uh, curious to see. I think Chalk and Bates will go better with a more European-centered panel. Perhaps. And, uh, and perhaps Hubble and Donahue with a, with a non-European centered panel. So you would think maybe. However, what I wonder is, is it just like a wide open door for Canada? Because Canada has nothing else at these Olympics. Likely fourth in the team event, 
not right. going to get a ladies medal, uh, women's medal, sorry, not going to get a men's medal, not going to get a pairs medal. Right. They can put all of their wheeling and dealing behind pairs because even though meddling uh, shows how Canada is on the right side of history and they're the good egg, they got real political when the IJS came in and State Canada started to fight back because they were- And it was their job to do so, yeah. I mean, it's interesting though, because Piper and Paul, I think are the at, most look at vulnerable. 2008, 2008, all of a sudden Canada is like boosting through the roof. I mean, it used to be just like when the 2001, 2002 Grand Prix final was in Canada and Borden Kratz win and you're like, home ice, right? That happened. Right. Jamie right. and David are getting the sixes for love story. That's not gonna happen in another country. But now, then it started happening. They were all of a sudden boosting their program and got way more successful at politics. We see you, Canada, brilliant move on your part. But to say that I, I do think that it could be an advantage for Gillis and Poirier because it's like, it's almost like there's a confusion in the US. We thought last season that Hubble and Donahue were the team moving ahead politically. Now after nationals and after the history of Hubble and Donahue, thinking about the Olympics, I'm thinking of, wait, which American team? Is it Chalk and Bates that can be great, can be kind of eh? It reminds me of the Grand Prix where Russia couldn't decide. So they were kind of equally pushing Stefana Babukin and Vicky and Nikki, and then they just both kind of fell short. Both teams, if they had just rallied behind one. That's again, assuming your only goal is to get one team higher. But is it Hubble and Donahue's ultimate fault because they just can't nail the small details on the moment? Yeah, was that decision made when they should have won the bronze at the last Olympics? I think it goes into a narrative about them that has happened time and time and time and time again. And it's gotten closer in Ice Dance. Right? I think Chalk and Bates having good material is an X factor because in the last four years. They had horrible material for years. The Les Mis in 2014, um, the Rock Modernoff in 2016, whatever the crap they were doing every single 2017. They've had, uh, Imagine in 20, I mean, they had trite. Even play- American in Paris fell short or whatever oh, that God, yes. was, which Awful. should have worked, you right. thought, but yeah. Trite, unimaginative, uninspired material. And we were able to see them in a certain way they get great material from Marie France and now we view them completely right. differently. Yeah. Now they're like that attention grabbing team and it's really evened out the yeah. way uh, the top two teams stack up. I think that they should be ahead of um, Piper and Paul, but because of the way Ice Dance politics work, I think Canada's got a real shot at just pulling off a nice Tracy Wilson bronze medal and mm. getting there. Mm. Well, and then where now with this huge push with Stepanov Abukin, are they are they mixing into the North American lineup? I yeah. still in my even though I like the the material, having seen them all live now, which was really important for me to understand how to assess them as a non-ice dancer, I feel like if we have France and then I'm clumping Russia and the three North Americans together in the next group, and then and then step on of a book outside of those. Yeah. If so, anything to, yeah. Yeah, because let's think about it. Any federation has an opportunity to go for that bronze medal. I could see Russia getting two dance medals at the Olympics because there's so much North American confusion over which team. And what did Frank Carroll tell us about Canada? No, not our friends. Yeah. Yeah. You got to do. <laughs> yeah. when they they could all be scrambling so that they actually clear the way for a Stefanov Abukin catapult. It could happen. Okay. I'm not mm. saying it will happen. And there, I think that they're now with Ice Dance, with the fact that there are callers and it's more objective, it does come down more to the skating. But it is going to be really tight between. Yes, the, the, all of this, of course, assuming most people just do a, a good job, like without any big error. And of course, we only know of one team that really is prone to error. Well, one could be Nikita falling out of a twizzle, or we know that potentially Hubble and Donahue could get overexcited and do something too big, you know? So but I, I don't know. There was even something, again, because I think the 
one of the most dynamic moves of mm -hmm. all of this ice dance season is that opening lift and exit from Hubble and Donahue. Mm -hmm. Now I'm comparing that to sort of all the lifts of uh, Vicky and Nikki. They're all variations on a theme. The curve lift, the rotational lift, it's the same thing over and over again. Isn't it interesting that Julin, as an ice dancer himself, was one of the most interesting mm -hmm. people to watch, but coached by Dubaba. Right. Then we saw him choreograph for Kurt Browning in the 90s, so interesting. Now as an ice dance coach of top teams, but we're over Total so generic. Yeah. Generic, like. And those pro programs, remember when they were in like the bodysuits with the heads? Like, yes. I loved how unique they were. And now, remember. Remember the butterfly were, program that he and Usava did? I mean, to the Mozart. I mean, it was stunning. But then you watch this and you're like, oh, he really does. But do you think, because they were kind of a burned team, mm -hmm. you know, bronze, silver. You know, the ISU, no. remember, they were good at lyrical dramatic. That was their strength. And then the ISU switched it and said, you have to be up-tempo. Imagine. Da, da, da. Remember when he like grabbed her ponytail and they're like doing that stuff and Tracy Wilson pretending, she's like, I like this refreshing look for them. I was like, no, you don't. Tracy. She loves it in like fourth place, you know, come yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. Shame. I wonder if they felt sort of, um, snubbed by trying to be interesting. And that's what I think happened to Piper and Paul. I think Piper and Paul got the message that if they play it generic and safe, they have a better shot. Yeah, but they've done the same theme now for four years. Right, right. It's been variations on a theme, but it's that same window. Lo people loved Vincent. They were touched by both sides now. They had the added narrative that always plays in in a sport like this when someone loses a parent and they're being reflective. But now, towards the end of their careers, you're doing the same kind of theme, and it's it's less weird to me. Yeah. And then, of course, they do the thing where, you know, she posts on Instagram about their long and winding road. You know, the Grand Prix final being canceled was just another part of our long and winding road. I mean, I was vomiting. Were you vomiting in your mouth? <laughs> Her birthday and happy birthday. <laughs> and I know you have to do it in skating, and you have to get yeah, people up. Yeah. I know this is how this works. But yes, it, that kind of thing makes me always crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and again, uh, what, you know what? Um, uh, it sounds like the German commentary this time around was very interesting for you. Yeah, Yona, yes. Yes, but also Katerina, I, I was hearing from someone wrote in to the dance to proclaim her love and the potential future greatness of a Diana Davis. And I was like, they got to her. Somebody got to Katerina, come on. Like, what there happened? are these dancers who really like her. And it's like, but it tends to be the females that find her really sexy and really edgy and other people find that they just- But not actually on an edge. That's sort of my issue is I'm looking at the oh, feet. Yeah. They got a level two on the circular step, which is the one where she's walking on the flats at the beginning of it. And that made me laugh. <laughs> because but that is correct. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. You when do solid elements though. And unlike Hubble and Donahue, they are not. I mean, mm -hmm. she delivers like someone who came from Hrustal Nee in Sambo 70. She right. is that kind of consistency. There yeah. is, that's how she trains. And that's how Igor trains his teams to deliver. Uh, their Moulin Rouge is cheap, generic, looks like it was from Claire's, uninspired knockoff of like what would happen to Igor without Marina. However, <laughs> they are delivering and they do yeah. give kind of consistency. They're kind of the opposite of Fear and Gibson in some ways where, mm -hmm. Fear and Gibson, they kind of grab your heart and you just kind of love them. You can tell they love skating. They love what they're doing. They're into the material. But sometimes the mistakes really get to that team where you can't trust the reliability to really want to put them ahead. Remind me, I thought there was a reason. Why are they, why did they seem so far behind in my mind this season? Like I felt they got a late start or something or like in general, they seemed like a little, just a couple steps behind everybody else in their preparation. Did, and I think some of it was the new material, although we had originally heard over a year ago that they were going to do the Lion King, but they remember they kept the Vogue program and they- Which was they, great. They, they did switch part of their free dance right before, I think they switched the, maybe the rhythm dance uh, going back, but um, they, 
I'm going to forget, I'm going to remember it as soon as we hang up. Uh, but they, uh, they did switch some of their material uh, this season right before they competed. So uh, I know that that kind of got them. And just on it, because I do enjoy them very much. And um, I, I think that the Lion King, I understand the idea behind it. I understood why they thought it might work, but it's not cool enough for them. It's cinematic, which I think is why it's so, um, it builds to this amazing climax for someone like Wakaba. In, in this thing, they needed something a little like edgier, cooler, slicker, that, as opposed to cinematic, I felt. The first time they came on TSL Live, I, we made them watch the IF video because I thought that this could be the material for them. The wrong team did Janet Jackson. They yes. should have. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree. Couldn't you see Lewis being like, dun, 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 Come on, like yes. that would have been the yes. most. 100%. It would have gone viral at the Olympics. Yeah. I stand by my opinion. We yeah. can eat our own. But <laughs> I, I think their material is good. I, I really like the rhythm dance more. Yes. Uh, and I like both programs. They just have to skate clean. They cannot have little errors. They're kind of that yeah. team. They have to be clean for people to get behind them. Yeah. Are you worried about Marie Francis in these Olympics? Where does she go from here? Is this her rebuilding stage? And how well, long? because this, again, we know goodwill only goes so far in ice dance, right? Like one day everyone just decides they're sick of you. Like when, when it seemed like the Shibutani sneaking in for that bronze at the Worlds mm -hmm. was so offensive to some judges that they kept him down for a long time afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder, I wonder if this, it will be interesting when a lot of her teams retire, but you mean going into the Olympics? Where, do they, where no, does she next vote? Year, is this uh, next season. season? Remember, Marina was like through 2014 and then with the Shibutanis, we saw it wane, right? I don't know who's ready to replace her. And that was the interesting thing. Russia. When, yeah, but who? Because even, it's not like all of their teams are with Shulin or all of their teams are with- well, Go to skating scores. Or, if you go to, let's talk about who could be done. Vicky and Nikki, done. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Italians, I would think done. I would Stepanov, think. Stepanov and Bukin, not sure. He's a dad they now. Could they could stay in. They could stay in for a year or two. Yeah. Um, Smart and Diaz potentially retiring. Sada Hurtado potentially retiring. Diana Davis starts moving up. I know. He and medalist uh, next yeah. season. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it paves the way. I, well, let's see where the Canadians end up. Let's see where, you know, some of those teams. It, it's going to be done. Chalk and base. There's a lot of people that need to now take a big step forward because I think of the group that's retiring, they have had a lock on that top scoring section, and the people below them are considerably behind, mm -hmm. points wise. So we'll see. Will they focus on their junior teams? Uh, in Montreal, and I know that they weren't accepting new teams, but also they didn't have any openings for this year. They right. might have their openings for next year. Or will they like focus on the junior teams and really build and refine and put all of their energy there? And then we'll see in like two years, they'll be much stronger. I don't know, just kind of curious to see what happens there. Um, okay. But I'm curious, Jonathan, if you had to say your team event lineup for Russia, get out a piece of paper, what do you do? Okay. When we discuss the men. Okay. Oh dear. When we discuss Let's the talk men. about it in real time. Because remember, you get two replacements. And the latest I'm hearing is that Valjeva wants to do one event. So she's not the next Yulia. You know, she wants to save some of the mojo and Yeah. Yeah. So um, if she does if she does the short, right? I think that's smarter than having Trusiva do the short. Would you trust Anna or Trusiva in the free? Does it really matter? What do you think? I would put Trusiva in the free. Isn't that interesting? I would put Anna in the free, but I know that Anna might be tired or injured or something more, maybe more easily than the others. I find they don't have a yeah, great out. Yeah, I put in Anna, quite frankly, because the judges seem to, no matter what she does, give her that love in the PCS. So I, mean, I would do a Valieva Shevakova combo. Did the Europeans, on one hand, you see it, if you see it, so Galena texted me last night, three beautiful Russian girls on the podium. And I wrote back, how did Ukraine do? <laughs> she loves that. She loves that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's funny. Um, listen, she can dish the shade. 
she can take it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. That's the rule. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, I think Anna Trusiva, I think it's depending who's looking better in practice at that point in time. But okay. it does look like a little bit of a house of cards, right? Yeah, 100%. For, if you, for Anna, and, and it's more short program Anna than free program Anna. <laughs> then all of a sudden it looks like Japan looks stronger. Right, right. But again, the only, because they'll give Sherbakova the PCS, suddenly you don't need all of that technical content necessarily, especially if she can under rotate a quad and still get credit for it anyway. But even if she doesn't do any quads, I think her PCS will put her above anyone from Japan, above anyone from Canada, above anyone from the United States. So that's all she needs to do is beat those other countries. And I think that's mm -hmm. very clear. That's very easy for her to do. If, if, if Trusev is not landing, it's not easy for her to do. There, there's more PCS room that they could wiggle calorie ahead or something. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it comes down to if Valieva just wants to do the short, which is probably smart for her, right? If that is true, which these things, things can change in three weeks. Of how course. you're feeling about things, right? And if, look, if she's so much stronger than the other girls and they're like, you're going to win no matter what, honey. Right. She could do programs in now, right? right? So if Valieva just does the short and Anna slash Trusova does the free, I think it comes down to, do they just eat it in the men's event? and be like, either call you or Mark, we'll put them in for both, doesn't matter, we're not gonna win so the let's, match. let's see, I think they don't, they, it's a fat chance that they're going to beat a US man or a Japanese man. And they would know the that, team yes. So they know that. So they're looking at someone who can be a Roman or a Keegan. Mm -hmm. So who do you think best beats a Roman or a Keegan? I think Kolyada gets PCS over Roman or Keegan. How many times could I, he pop? How many times could he fall? Well, I that's want to put he has more to in. lose in the short. He has more to lose in the short, don't you think? If he pops, I want to put Kolyada in because he's better. But we don't know how you know what is his injury situation, and is Mark just the safe bet for which for both? Well, the, I think that they there's the chance. Think about how many medals a Terry could get here if Vicky and Nikki only want to do one of the portions in the team event and then you have Stepanova Bukin through the free dance because they've gotten it done so that you can't put Diana in I mean come on that would be a scandal of epic proportions at this point and Terry didn't get that done this season like they wanted but dance was... is tricky I mean obviously I think the teams will be Japan but they have to beat Canada and the U.S. so if they can you do both I think they're going to push for Tarasova and Morozov to do maybe the short and then Mishina Galyamov to do the free. Mm. You have to think how many gold medals that Terry wants in this team event, right? I she's, think, she's looking to rack up, yeah. I think they're just going to eat it in the men's either way because it doesn't matter. Yeah. And they're not- I don't, yeah. I don't know that Mark or Kolyada is such a clear front runner ahead of Keegan or Roman. Look at what they did to Mark's components here. You talked about to boost him for the Olympics. He suddenly goes into the Olympics as a European champion. That gets you what, 0 0.5, 0 0.25 on your program components? I mean, when the boy's whipping himself and that's the highlight of the program, I mean, his triple X. Wait, so let's talk about it though, because Mark ends before the 40th lash. Yeah, it's like 39. Okay, thanks for coming, everybody. And I was like, oh, we were so close. Cool. I mean, I have to say that's a smart program that builds into a frenzy at the end. So by the end, we are literally watching a skater dance around whipping himself. And yet we are ready to jump out of our seats because it is it, it gives it performance PCS. That's all you does. Beauty is different. Yeah. He's got all the performance, none of the quality. <laughs> none. Right. Right. Zero. That he's giving him razzle dazzle. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So much razzle dazzle. I like watching it. I don't it's think it's very it, entertaining. Yeah. I don't think it has the quality of Kolyada. I don't think it has the quality of the Japanese men, but he's getting it done. Russia has at least set up that they have a man who can go in for seventh and eighth place at those Olympics and get it done and then move ahead for next season. 
I mean, yeah. they've positioned him with yeah. if he can continue to be consistent because Semenenko. What happened there? And do you think, I mean, do you think Semenenko's spot is in danger right now? Yes. Yeah. And in, in, a weird, in a weird way, Mishin did it to his own skater because Moselev would not have had this skate off if, Kolya if Kolya Kolya Kolya. showed up. So, so the fact that now he's, his skater's absence has now maybe cost his other skater the spot. It's funny because the fans have had a really hard time. I don't know if you get a lot of messages, but how many messages, like the guy that does the timestamps, that's like very intense about it. Um, and now he always like writes as though like we're trapping him and like, I'm grateful he does it, but like, honey, yeah. you need to take tomorrow night and do it. Like, honey, like people- <laughs> We appreciate just, it. The fans appreciate it. Yeah, fans sure. appreciate it, you know? Um, but he does write comments as though he's like chained in a basement somewhere, like like his <laughs> second season of Desperate Housewives and he's locked in the basement and we're making <laughs> like, we're the timestamps. Uh, so uh, anyway, I kind of, where are we going with this? What was I talking about? Oh, Semenenko. Yeah, they think yeah. people, like people have had a really hard time realizing like Ateri is all powerful in Russia. Tuktimishiva was done at the nationals. My Unless Sherbakova can't walk, or Trusova's leg actually splits in half and like part of it is dismembered like Heather Mills, she's going to be having all three ladies at the Olympics. What happened when Anna bombed the short program after nationals, there was a window that they would have to yank her if she did not deliver in the free. Right. Anna solidified that spot. Right. So, that, but people still want to believe in- Semenenko did not. Semenenko did not. No, what? I mean, people talked about it in the press, but it didn't seem serious. The threat of pulling Semenenko seems very real. Yeah. That comes and down- And also, out of nowhere Russia came this Holland. narrative that like Ru Russia is only interested in the most recent competition or something like that, as opposed to a body of work. But I mean, listen, neither one pulls me in, really. No. I, I, I mean- I, I would go with they, Mosul. I'm sorry, Misha, but I would go with Mosulov after this competition. I don't have a strong feeling one way or another, but. And even when Semenenko hits, like, you know, when I saw him live in Canada, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't leave you with a feeling. Mosulev does emote a bit more, but the Semenenko material's a little wonky and the judges, or the jumps always looked a little eked out even when they go well. I don't know, it's not my favorite aesthetic. Not my favorite, but. Yeah. No, neither one is really, but I think Mosul Yov. Um, and I think the scoring potential is similar. So that's when it's sort of like, well, let's give the guy who's doing better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look, I think he was, you know, he was against the ropes and he got knocked out. Is what I. Yeah. Okay. And it only gets more intense from here, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, I have, how about, let's talk about the other men here. How is Daniel Grossville, European super medalist, John? Wait, you, our Turkish judge had him number one in components in the short <laughs> And our friend Leonardo Bonomo, who loves whenever an Italian does well. I mean, Leonardo, which we love. I mean, that's great. Yeah. Leonardo both have eyes. I mean, John. <laughs> Since it's been pointed out to you, can you look away from the Daniel Grossville head position in the air on those jumps? No. It is, it's like a Pez head and with the mouth open and because of the hair, it turns like one of those like car washing devices. Like, yeah. Whose crossovers do you think are better? Daniel's or Truce of Us? Oh, hmm. They should do pairs together. They're well matched. I mean, <laughs> as, as one um, coach said to me that if Truce of a, could learn how to do a proper crossover, she might put her in the mid to high sevens for components, mm. if she could ever learn to do a crossover. Yeah. I mean, the thing uh, is yeah. like Daniel's, I mean, we've seen quad flips and Lutz's and loops and I, he's really- Off and cheated. Yeah. And, and a little bit of a trying, Vincent. Right. Well, although Vincent, Vincent took more of a step to fix the PCS mark, although some people had him first. Um, <clears throat> He, he mentioned something in an article about wanting to go to Atari over the summer. He had tried last summer, but COVID made it ridiculous. So the idea that he wanted to go there for crossovers in PCS was unique. Um, and I don't know what they would do with that, 
the jungle. Although, do you think it carries a step up over Benoit? I would say yes. I'd be intrigued at, what at, she could do with them. At this yeah. point, what Benoit pulled off this season, first of all, the marketing of Benoit is kind of genius. He picked up all of these little tiny countries and the Estonian girl with all the all the sequins. And that looks like she cut it. I mean, that is a truly heinous costume. I mean, the material. <laughs> Okay, maybe she doesn't have a lot of money, you know, and went to Joanne's and they just cut some sequin material. I don't know. Okay, that okay. is <laughs> what he did for Korokova. What he did, the Daniel Gross, the White Crow. You think that boy's balletic? Is right. the surprise? Oh, he's not. Right. <laughs> that's that's the twist. It's it like... tri it tricked the Turkish judge. That's oh. the power of music here. I'm telling you, like, I oh, do think, that think if you... does feel like it's the end of time, that he's a, a silver yeah. medal European. That's like, okay, we need to really, if Daniel Grossel is a silver medalist Europeans, and I'm sure he's a nice kid, but his skating emphasizes stuff that shows that the IJS system is out of whack with how yeah. much, how they're not valuing components enough, how they're not scoring components correctly, how they are overvaluing jumps to everything else in terms of a spin. Yeah, because again, talking about our ratio, he was eighth in PCS, but yet the eighth placement in PCS doesn't matter because he was first technically, so now he's skyrocketed. To and what was the yeah. difference in the, in the PCS? It's not enough, right? And, right? and this was not a great, <laughs> I'm sorry. He wasn't competing against Shoma Uno, uh, Yuzuru Hanyu, Yuma Kagiyama, uh, right. Katsuki Machida, he wasn't at Japanese nationals uh, right. in this. Some of these men were piss poor in terms right. of opponents. Skating she, skills, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, my God. Okay. Yeah. Listen, Kaka and Nutella. Stop rooting they Nutella. Color, <laughs> they're not the same thing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Jonathan, this was really disgusting. That was, yeah. that Armageddon program is just god awful. And you know why I think Benoit has the, um, I, those Yoko Ono glasses this season that look like Coke bottles? Because he is hiding mm. in shame. Okay. Mm. He is hiding mm. in shame because he knows that he is seen with this. I, I mean, it has to be. You talk about Marie France, is she in a rebuilding phase? I think we might be at the end of the Benoit thing. Whatever is happening here, this is, it's gone well, again, too far. I, I always go back though to like Aliona saying, you know, he's, he's accidentally pigeonholed himself into this lack of PCS sort of skater seeks him out. And so I think it perpetuates this, the limitations of what he can do. You know what I mean? If your job is to try to distract. Ring, I would like to tell Yulia, Please use someone Canadian for Lindsay's program next season, for God's sakes, okay? Yeah, yeah. Lindsay doesn't need a car crash at the beginning of her program, okay? Right, right. This is, uh, my God, okay? Or, co or cornrows, yeah, no. That was her mother, not Lula's fault, okay? <laughs> Jonathan. A team is a team, a team is a team. <laughs> um, Listen, she's gutsy. She went, that girl wanted to do the triple axel. Okay. She's gutsy. She Which wanted I admire. Go for broke. Go for broke. Okay. Yeah. You want yeah. to go for it. All right. Uh, Classic Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, what about Kevin? Loved him. Loved him. But he wasn't so strong here. But think about he, if you saw the practice footage here, he was like the best. He so needs to believe this, in this himself. season. Yeah. Is it just nerves? No, he was off with injury for several months and has been just so far back. I mean, where he's come from Skate America to now is... Well, and, it's, and that's why when he said he wanted to pull out of Skate America, they needed to let him. Because mm -hmm. not only did it not go well, but I think it left a cloud that lingered for a while. And it's now been coming back from the thing he knew he should not have done. I mean, do you just like... My favorite part is when he feels himself up at the beginning of the program. I... <laughs> I do really like his program. I think the M83 is great music for him. Uh, I, 
I like him. He has something different than the other guys. He can actually yes. sit on an edge and mm -hmm. bend his knees. And, and he's unique. He music. holds my interest. Yeah. It's like the fear in Gibson of, and the Smart and Diaz of the men's event where you just want him to do well. Yeah. And I just hope- Because you want to see those kinds of programs, that kind of material, that sort of energy and approach to be rewarded. Yeah. Because otherwise it will encourage people like that to not, and then just do all these other formulaic things. I hope that with confidence in three weeks, he can go out and nail it. He would be kind of that person at the Olympics that you just want to skate a perfect yeah. program. Everyone would really respond to. There's just- Yes. He's adorable. You're right. There's, he loves skating, loves music, expresses. He doesn't have the highest uh, quad content, but it's certainly- Now certainly compare and contrast that then to sort of the skating skills of someone like um, Dennis, because he was getting PCS through the- it, he was given the European treatment as if he was a Jason Brown, that we're sort of like, okay, we're gonna reward this because we want to show you that this is the quintessential beautiful skating, even though it lacks technically. He had the performance of his life. The, I mean, was that his first clean quad? I, I never sure. believed I would see that kind of quad from him. And it's so perfectly on the music. It was a little ridiculous. It was he had the performance of his life. I don't love the hair. I don't love the costume, but the performance of his freaking life. And- yeah in the field that he was against, it's all relative, right? I mean- Yeah, he does that. have very lovely skating skills. Again, there was some, I'm gonna go back to it. There was some like really confusing PCS marking going on there. It didn't, cause some people really acknowledge, okay, this is the best skater we have here. Well, it certainly can't hurt in components to have Lambiel at the boards with you. It's what he's but, known about with the skaters, is what he knows, right? Bulgaria had him seven in PCS after the short where most people had him first and second. Like, there's just a confusion, I think, about what to do with this kind of skater at the moment. Because it's How about not Morris with Jason the hands? Brown. How about Morris with the hands? Are you... <laughs> yeah, where, wait, now, for instance, let's say Bulgaria had Morris uh, in sixth in PCS. So it put Dennis behind Morris' <laughs> skating skills. Morris Seems is one of those totally skaters right. who'd be like, what would, how would Morris place if he were Russian? How would Morris place if he weren't with the Terry and were still representing Georgia? I mean, it could go anywhere. <laughs> 100%. How would those toes and sow cows be called with a different coach, with a different fitter? I mean, it's- Talk really about a repetition, fun. yeah, yeah. But, and yet there's something endearing with him over time. I, I don't know, I find myself humored by Morris. Like, okay. <laughs> like it's a mess. Right? Like the whole thing is a mess. And yet, like a Terry kind of giggles about him. And I kind of find myself like giggling about the entire situation. I mean, she leads the way on how we're supposed to view him. Yeah. Yeah. You know what they say about him? <laughs> like, even he shoots straight like once in a while, you know? Yeah, I mean, exactly. It wasn't at this Europeans, but at a Europeans. <laughs> and a cup of Russia. Oh my gosh. Or Russ Telecom cup. Crazy. Yeah. Now let's talk about those ladies. All right. Um, Jonathan. Yes. Luna Hendricks needs to believe in herself. She needs yes, to she see does. herself as a top person. I don't know. She needs to get Nancy Kerrigan, sports psychologist. I think her brother and Adam, are, Solia, are doing a good job with her. Frankly, I mean, she had one of the worst Celine Dion edits ever. But people still loved her because they love her skating. They love her musicality. And, and what it represents. It's, she's right. become like a figurehead for like beautiful skating. She's kind of like the European Mariah Bell, only better now. She used to yes. be worse. Now she's better. Uh, but she, the falls in the free. Not that I think that she felt that she could have actually beaten the two Barisa skaters in the long with the way the components go. But I mean... She just wilted right off the bat. And well, and it was too bad because at first, I know that Lutz got an exclamation point in the first triple triple, but I did not anticipate that the toe was going to go down. Like the Lutz looked pretty solid to me. And then there was just such a lean forward. I knew she was going to wilt. I was afraid, oh give, given her shock value yes. at, the, at the short. Yeah. yeah. And it's the second time. It's yeah. the second time that she's had a great short and placed higher than they would have thought, it needs to become more expected. She needs to now believe that that's where she belongs. And unfortunately, it seems like she's still surprised by it. 
She's yeah. a really good skater. Well, wouldn't you say that like, now we we were tracking it all last season in the fall, like all of her skates were beautiful and wonderful, but it really she landed sort of on the scene in a new way at that world championship. So it's still, in my opinion, like less than one full calendar year. I know. That she's sort of been so relevant. And you're right. I think she's getting used to it. Yeah, but the other skaters who move ahead, the ones who really make their mark, like a, a team two breeds a skater, when they come on the scene, they nail and they nail again. And they right. keep and that's and they how, expect to. Yeah. Yes. And she still she has bigger jumps. She's got powerful jumps. She's got power mm. skating. She's got um she could be that Kevin Amos figure. She can be, you know, how Carolina Costner was like the anti-Russian skater. She can be that, not that I'm saying that she's as good as Carolina, but she can be the antithesis of what the other people right. are. Represents right. another path. Yeah. Yes. Because Gorkova is still a Russian skater, even though she's representing Poland. And yeah. um and Gubanova. Do you know what I mean? This, you know, he's or, all Russian Rialbova, skaters, right? So yeah. it's not that different than what the top three are offering. So if you can offer a different style of skating, and, and this has more of an old school quality to it, there are people that are going to respond to it, but she needs to be really consistent every single time. And it just seems like- Even if her placement remained fourth, but she had done that cleanly. I, again, with the technical content, there was really no way they were going to let her make, make the podium. But- she could have had a solid fourth again because I see her above the Americans. She's the kind of skater that she's not going to medal at the Olympics. Okay. No, 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 no. But I could see her a solid six, seven. She might make that final group. But with someone Zagitova's at Worlds, which I think is very possible after the Olympics, if someone doesn't do well and is expected to do well, she's someone that could get a medal at a post Olympic Worlds, but she needs to figure out her mental game between now and then. Her job is to have a great Olympics and figure out how to really believe that she belongs there. So when, when she does a short program at Worlds, she needs to be expected. And she needs to expect it because she knows Trusova is gonna go down on the triple axle. Right. Technique is god awful for what she's trying to do. And knowing that Sherbakova has made errors if Sherbakova even goes to Worlds, if we don't right. see Tutimisheva at a Worlds, right? I right. think that would be where we would see Tutimisheva, not in the Olympics, people that think that like they're gonna pull it now at this point, like on a- No, at this point, and it would be terrible if this happened, but if someone is injured or has COVID, it's the only way I see it happening, yeah. I don't see Russia getting a positive COVID test. I don't, I don't think so either. They don't have it there. It just seem, yeah. You know what? Russia seems too um, concerned about COVID and they seem too good about the coronavirus to have a positive test. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Especially on the metal stands. <laughs> Jonathan, I, yeah. I believe that their team will be COVID free at the Olympics and in the test. Because they're that strong. Their immune systems are that strong that they would never get. And frankly, I'm jealous of them. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Envious of that immunity, yeah. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. mm -hmm. So but I think you're right. Luna could have a big moment at Worlds, but again, has to expect it. Yes. Like Anna Sherbakova knows that she didn't even have to do a combo, and she can expect that she's going to be right there in the mix, no problem. Well, think about it. Krokova is, or Korakova, however, you know, is really being making herself in that position, although she's not getting the high GOE on her elements. She got a V on the spin, very cricket club of her. Uh, I have to be honest, I don't really, there was a huge fan push for her. Mm -hmm. And I was like, is this just because it's something that's not a Terry? So it, it's, I love that she was having a good time. I, I think, um, I don't see this as a top sort of skater. Yeah, I don't see it either, so. yeah. I, I felt like everyone, I'm glad that everyone was having such a moment watching her. I just seemed to miss what everyone else was enjoying. Well, I, um, Jonathan, yeah. I would think of you as an honest person. Thank you. <laughs> and I, you. <laughs> Can you believe that Anna Sherbakova's quad flip was around at the European Championships and worthy of a plus four or plus three? I know, Estonia, they're like, whoa, how about those classes? That was... Even in slow mo, uh, from our camera. Now, listen, I know the judges had different cameras, but they still have a camera. Come on now. I mean, it's supposed to be given the benefit of the doubt to the skater, but the fact that, like, 
her technical score was basically the same as Valieva's. And even though Valieva had some issues, she still landed two clean quads. Where did that caller get taken to dinner? Right. <laughs> the controller was French, our favorite skating country, <laughs> political and partial. <laughs> and there was a Hungarian, Zofia, right? I mean, the, Jonathan, this was ridiculous. I mean, that yeah. is, that's just wrong. That's just yeah. wrong, okay? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Although ultimately sends a message to keep trying the cheated ones because you might just eke it out anyway. Mm -hmm. And it, it, not only to have been given full credit at the face value, but again, all these threes, all these threes and fours. I mean, we're going to talk about it. Uh, Valieva in her choreographic sequence almost fell down mm -hmm. and she got massive GOE on it. Didn't make any sense. Because it was she plus four and she almost fell down. Because she did, she did it more beautifully, okay? <laughs> what part of this don't you understand? You know what the best thing that came out of here? No, she's a lovely skater, right? She really Of course, is. yeah. If not a presentational, she doesn't project live at all, now, which is why like, the audience response is somewhat lukewarm. You know, some of the nationalistic fans, like the reporter that interviewed me, don't want to see the negatives, right? Or the reality. There's a great YouTube video that came up between short program she did last year and the short program she did this year. Oh, you mean the same exact choreography from That's jump all the way through every spin entrance? Every, it's, it's again, they should show themselves. Identical. It's the same if you watch Medvedeva 2016 and 2017, the great side by side. This one tops that on yeah. par with the Kolyada step sequence in the short and long, only this is the same, this is the entire program. Yeah. <laughs> again, because music doesn't matter. Well, when you pick music that's, a, that's that ambient and vacant, and it can sound like that to anything. But I think that's why. So the music doesn't get in the way of what you're trying to it's do. Like and it's like- be, I believe this was supposed to be like a memoriam for a grandparent who passed away. And last year's was a storm. And why do they have the same interpretation? Right. The music can't possibly be hitting the same beats in the same way. Come on, you know that. It's... This is not a storm, it's a drizzle. Okay. <laughs> a memorial drizzle. Yeah. I mean, the same freaking program. What'd you make of our girl Trusiva and her call me Cruella meltdown here? So, okay. You know, I, I all things considered, the um, Frida short program, good vehicle for her because they let her land in such non traditional poses and positions after the jumps under the guise that it's artistic choice. <laughs> and, and so I think there's already some sneaky stuff happening that way. The Cruella was just, I love, I love. In a way, I love that she owns it. She's not even gonna fake it. She's not even gonna try. You know, sometimes they'll like try with a flurry here. She doesn't even have time to pretend that she's going to interpret. She's just gonna go for it. And you either like it or you don't. And nothing she can do choreographically is gonna change your mind. You already go in either disliking this approach to the sport or loving this approach to the sport. And so fine, do your jump drill, just go ahead on, but you might as well land the jumps because if you don't, then I, I find it in ridiculously vacant and uninteresting. If we were to put the lovely Timothy Gable in a dress, I believe Timothy Gable might look balletic and um, full of components compared to Trusova. He had posture, didn't he? Uh, he had that upright back in in O2. I don't know. There was you could sell you could you could still tell even if it wasn't that inherent artistry that someone was on him about the aesthetic. Truth of it makes him look like John Curry. That's right. what, yes, correct. Because no, there. I think they just like get out of her way, and she was even like, "Yeah, I don't care. I'm trying it all. I'm gonna try it all, and if I fail, I fail." Which there's something admirable about that. It's like an athlete, like, I'm going to throw it out on the table. I'm going to risk everything every time. But as a viewer, when most of those gambles don't pay off, it leaves you wanting a little bit something more from the sport in general. She used to be able to pull some fast spins two, three seasons ago. Has she just spent all the time on quads and not worked on them? Has her back been kind of diminished by the quads? I'm not so sure but well this is interesting also because at some point where do we start separating the jumpers from the spinners here mm. sorry. um 
because like I remember Tanya and like other people like that, like their spins were so fast and so powerful. And I don't know, I don't know why someone like Trusova now isn't also trying to be the fastest spinner. If you can be the best jumper or the do the most difficult elements, why not do the most difficult spins? It's intriguing that it doesn't, I, perhaps because the points are so much lower. So it just seems like a waste of effort, I guess. Yeah. I but know. I don't know. And there, yeah, I was just going to keep harping on a point, but I think it's been established. <laughs> also, I mean, the Estonian girl and that program, <laughs> that costume for the short, always um, interesting. Yes. Yes, that one was sent to me. That one was funny. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, just interesting judging here all around. Do you see this playing out this way on the Olympic podium? Well, you know, our friend Na is pushing for Sherbakova to make the Olympics, even though she likes Tukdemisheva, she's rooting for this. She was rooting for Anna to make the Olympics. And do you want to know why, Jonathan? Because she thinks that Trusova and Sherbakova are more vulnerable and can lead to someone else winning a medal and stopping the stranglehold. Her thing is, let them. Let them send Anna. Let them send Anna. Let them send this. She can only pull it out of the hat so many times. And at one point, whether it's Worlds, whether it's Olympics, it will fail at some point. And she said to Jamisheva, they would be able to make sure she got the bronze, even if she can't really skate that well. And has uh, actually, in some ways, you're right. You're right. And it, but this is interesting. I mean, I mean, I think it's it's an interesting theory. She thinks that if you put them at Worlds and Olympics one of the times, Kauri, Wakaba the, could sneak in. Could sneak in. I, I find it not with this panel, but with a different right. One. That's yeah. exactly right. That's intriguing. I didn't really think of it that way. I mean, the interesting position is all their people will place the same. Mm -hmm. So do you care about the actual number in the score? Are you going for favorites? I don't know how you do it because no matter who you send, you're gonna go one, two, three. Mm -hmm. So, I, but you're right. Anna did one of those heroic, oh my goodness, performances here. How many times can someone do that? Like, she doesn't again, do it all. I, she didn't do but it. I admire her. Yeah. Again, I want to reiterate, like, there is such an admiration for the fact that she can do this. My yeah. issue has always been with her team, not with her. But a truce of a, this, this all in sort of gambling. I don't know. It, what happens if she goes all in and delivers a skate exactly like she did at the Russian test skate? I think suddenly you're in a position no where no matter what you try to do, the numbers won't let you put anyone else but her first. Oh, I think that they have tried to make it very clear that Valjeva is their number one. Oh, I think so too. And I think that Trusova, no matter what, will be coming from a deficit in the short program, unless she does that double axle. But I remember when we've gone back and judged old events, for instance, 2018, where I did not anticipate putting Nathan first in the free, the, the technical numbers almost made it impossible to do anything but. Do you think Trusova is the same skater that she was before because she does off ice jumps at Europeans and like it's almost a cast up her leg. I mean, mm. she is not a hundred percent. Yeah. She is willing herself like Anna. Yeah. I mean, they're all, most athletes at this point have injuries going into the Olympics. Some we know more than others, some right. more substantial than others, but that's one that is interesting. I don't believe she's the same skater she was at the test skates. I think that she is her. Uh, and, and it only took a couple months. Unfortunately, yeah. do you think that was about peaking too soon, or do you think it was just about unrelenting? I think it's the injury. I think the injury was bad, and she yeah. came back really quick to be here. Again, knowing she could have lost that spot, this would be a different situation if you didn't have a Tukdemisheva and the person you were trying to solidify a place over was Maya. Well, how about if if Tukdemisheva were an a Terry skater? Truce of our Anna may not even be here. They might have sat right. it out. Okay. Well, because as a Terry mentioned, like, well, if, if Tukdemishva was with me, she'd be doing quads all the time. Yeah. I believe that. I believe it too. <laughs> but right. yeah, it, it's, it's a really interesting uh, opening act for, what for was this your moment of the week? Okay, I'm gonna have, I, the Paris event in general, I just love watching like 
committed performances that go clean. Like, I really like that. I have to say Luna's short program was a really like fun moment because it, it surprised her, although we don't want it to surprise her. Mark being able to back it up because there's something about his performative quality that I do like. Uh, and I like uh, Smart and Diaz making the team, the Olympic team. So that's a lot of moments, many moments here and there. Uh, I mean, I loved Smart and Diaz. I loved Fear and Gibson, the pair, watching the pairs. But I have to say, Tamara Moscovino running in the, in the Paris event was fantastic. And her performance in meddling, is she spinning us? Is she political? Is she partial? Is she charming as hell? It, does she think Americans are dumb? Yes, 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 and yes. And she does it better than anyone. And I love watching it. Check yeah. blood to Miss Moscovina. Incredible performance this week, incredible. Hold an edge, it looks sexy. <laughs>